The Book of True Life, teaching three of 366. The Master teaches, Jesus as the perfect example. Divine Revelations, Mexico, 1866 to 1950. The Lord says, Behold the bread of eternal life. It has been a long time since you had a taste of it. For a long period of time you awaited me, and when you least expected, a light illuminated the firmament. When you asked from where it came and what it signified, someone replied, It is Elijah who has come to prepare mankind, to make it deserving of its communication with the Master. Like a shepherd who gathers and counts his sheep and hastily seeks the lost one to present a complete flock to his master, so Elijah has loved and guided you toward the fold and its warmth. When I have seen you in that state of readiness, I have offered you my bread, with which you are being nourished forever. Whoever has truly tasted this bread has enjoyed and relished my peace. And this nourishment, which is my divine word, emanates from the lips of a human being as one more manifestation that God truly dwells within the conscience of man. Why should I deprive you of the happiness of feeling my spirit within you? Whoever has peace and virtue in his heart will feel my presence within himself, although I am within all spirits regardless of how much they have sinned. He who has been will never die, and he who lives bears me within him, for I am life. There are bonds between God and his people which will never be broken, but if men feel isolated from their Heavenly Father, it is because of their lack of spirituality or their lack of faith. Neither death or lack of love will destroy that bond which unites you to me. No one will be able to escape from my presence. There does not exist a place or dwelling where you can conceal yourself from me, because wherever you go, I am with you, and wherever you are, you are in me. Do not be satisfied in knowing all this. It is necessary that you feel me, and in that manner allow me to manifest myself through your deeds. Meditate. If I am within you, where have you taken me whenever you sin? I speak in this manner, for I shall remove the ashes which exist in your heart until I find in it a spark of light. I grant you strength so that you may overcome all ordeals. I observe how your loved ones disrupt your life and submit you to many tests. The greatest obstacles for some in order to follow me have been their parents while for others, it has been their children. Many have come before this manifestation in a state of tears, well aware that in order to hear me, they had to leave their home in strife, and nevertheless, they have insisted on hearing me. How many tears, prayers, and how much patience has been shown by these people, in their hope that others understand this truth. There are those who have been forced to leave their homes, seeking the freedom of listening to my word. A number have been forced to leave their community in order not to be exposed by parents or friends, 
while others have lost their means of support and are ridiculed and called sorcerers. Still others have been denied their daily bread. When you suffer in that manner in order to follow me, why should I not receive you with tenderness or spread my balsam over your wounds? Do not complain about anyone or accuse any of your brethren. Leave your cause to me, for truly, I say to you, those who may have hurt you the most will be the most repentant and humble before me when they ask for balsam and forgiveness. They will then say to me, Lord, forgive me, how much heartbreak I caused my son. Another will say, Master, I denied my spouse because he followed you, and I punished him by withdrawing from him to occupy a separate bedchamber, because I judged him to be filled with darkness. They will ask my forgiveness, they will confess their faults, and realize that many times they received benefits through those whom they rejected. Therefore, I will say to them, while you thought of how to make life unbearable for these my laborers, they, in silence and in seclusion, prayed for you. But truly I say to you, O disciples, who are forgiven by me, do you forgive them also with sincerity? Christ, since that time, taught you a perfect forgiveness, which is born out of love. Today I come in spirit, but my teaching is the same. Rejoice that you have in your master the perfect model. Truly I say to you, that not before or after Christ have you had an example like that which he gave you. Would your master be perfect if his disciples superseded him in wisdom? No. Your spirits will eventually be great, but never greater than that of your Lord. The greater your spiritual elevation, the higher and mightier you will behold your God. The arrogant will finally fall by his own undoing, for believing to be fighting for his own cause, in reality he struggled against himself. Arrogance is the origin of many evils and suffering among the people of God. Ever since the first disobedient one appeared before my law, how much misery and how much darkness he has left in his wake. Since then, evil exists like an invisible force. I permitted that force to exist only to submit you to a test and it is through yourselves that I want to exterminate it. However, do not blame your faults and downfall on a certain being that will personify that force. Keep in mind that for each temptation there is a virtue within your spirit to combat evil. Understand and analyze the moment in which you live. I announced during the second era that I would return, and I told you what would be the signs of my coming. I want humanity to understand that these signs have already appeared. If I said that I would come, it was because I had more to disclose, and during that period I still could not reveal it, for you would not have understood it. Today I have come in spirit, and truly I say to you, there are some who believe that during the first times I was closer to you than I am today. They judge incorrectly, for during each of my comings I have been nearer to you. Remember that in the first era I descended upon a mount, and from there I conveyed my law engraved upon a rock. During the second era I left the summit of the mount in order to descend into your valleys, becoming man to live among you. And in this period, in order to be nearer, I have made my dwelling place within your heart, to manifest myself there and speak to mankind from within.
There are some who are skeptical in spite of listening to these teachings. And from these non-believers, many will eventually believe, while others will remain doubtful. However, the year of 1950 will come, and what coldness they will feel within their spirit, and how they will be tested by the hurricane winds, for by then there will be a beginning of great afflictions and ordeals among humanity. After my departure in 1950, the earth will tremble, and the clamor of mankind will reach the sky, and all of this will correspond with the obscurity and turbulence which took place in Jerusalem on the day that the Son of God was crucified. For many, that period will be one of resurrection. The fallen spirits in darkness will arise to a life of enlightenment. This era was prophesied. It was written that I would return. But behold, that while listening to my teaching through a man, many were doubtful and rejected me. Others did not give my manifestation the least importance. On beholding the indifference and the hardness of men before my word, I have had to perform those feats which you call miracles in order to awaken faith in some and attract the attention of others. Today one and tomorrow another. They are gathering around my word. It is upon their brow that I have symbolically marked them. It is the divine mark which they bear in their spirit. Therefore I have named them laborers of my domain. For these, there will be no need for books of science, philosophies, or doctrines in order to teach. The light of my Holy Spirit will be in their faculties, and their only book will be my word. Blessed are those who had faith and remained with me, for they have greatly rejoiced with the divine harmony of my teachings. Being people of God makes you deserving of this grace, but your merits are still scarce. I have not contemplated your blemishes, for there has been a mantle which has concealed them. And to whom does that merciful mantle belong? It belongs to Mary, your loving mother, who is ever watchful over each one of her children. You were allowed to inhabit earth during this third era, which will be of perfection, which was opened by Elijah, manifesting his spirit through a human faculty, and he also proclaimed my communication by the same means. However, this phase of preparation by means of human faculties is nearing its end. Soon my word will not be heard within these houses of prayer and those who did not preserve it within their hearts will feel like orphans. And there will be some who, believing the Lord to be distant from them, will afterward go in search of religions in order to find me. On the other hand, those who have learned my divine precepts will be the strong ones of this third era, because the way will be clearer to them. I have named this period the Era of Light. And behold, my people, the nations of the world involved in bloody, destructive wars. You, who have been called by me the Sons of Light, pray for your brethren, watch over all people in order for that light to reach their spirits, and tomorrow they will walk along the path of my law. When will men become true disciples of Christ? I, through Jesus, always taught you obedience, humility, and charity. Behold the right path. I have announced the arrival of great multitudes proceeding from other nations of the earth. 
apparent material motives will bring them to this nation. But deep down, it will be to receive the good news of the word which I granted you during this period. But meditate seriously regarding this mission. What are you going to convey, teach or testify to mankind if you have not prepared yourself or your children? Meditate on your responsibility so that your eagerness to become aware of my doctrine improves. And when that moment arrives, when someone knocks on your door, you will be prepared to offer them the divine nourishment by means of your thoughts, words, and deeds. Have faith, surrendering yourself to me, and then I will speak through your mouth. I can also reveal that from those parents who know how to elevate and spiritualize their lives, I will allow children to be born who will bring health and strength to their bodies and a message of wisdom in their spirits. In this house of prayer where you congregate to hear me, you will find comfort for your suffering and courage to face all ordeals which are to come. But as your spirit elevates itself, it shows me the seed which it is gathering from its work. Truly, I say to you, that the spirit will never feel fatigued by working in my domain. Therefore, a resting place in a tomb is not for it, for even after the death of its flesh, it will keep on working toward its elevation and perfection. If my word has come to illuminate the path of your spiritual struggle on earth, then you will find a greater light in the hereafter when you continue your journey toward the Creator. My divine light glows within the entire universe. Obey my law, but may your obedience be born from the understanding regarding the infinite love that the Father has for you. Hear me and pray. But do not go forth along the pathways before acquiring strength, for you would be unable to withstand the hurricanes and whirlwinds. I am showing the way and preparing you so that you will never abandon it. Truly, I say to you, he who in my name sows righteousness, which is charity, love and peace, is following my path and will find salvation. The only repentance I ask is that you dominate your egotism so that you may serve your fellow men with purity and goodwill. Study with attention this word which I give you through many spokesmen, for each one has his own gift. Do not despise anyone whom you consider as dumb for when this manifestation has ended, at the end of 1950, how many will wish to hear me, even if it were through the one who did not satisfy them? Therefore, I will grant you the grace of having my word transcribed by those whom I have destined and prepared for that mission, so that tomorrow you will not feel like an orphan who has lost his heritage. And when the multitudes and the last ones come before you, you will show them the book of my teaching as the most truthful and sincere testimony of what I reveal to you. For you still lack much in order to be, with your life and your word, like a book of truth and example. This book will awaken many spirits who slumber, and their hidden faculties will be developed. Its reading will inspire and will prepare the new generations, guiding them step by step toward a spiritual communication with my divinity. O oh, my humble laborers, rejoice, 
knowing that I chose you sinners to convert you into my instruments to save other lost ones. Would you show weariness or disgust in conveying peace, comfort, or happiness to those who suffer for the lack of these virtues? Never seek isolation or the solitude of your home to prevent the lamentation of mankind from reading. Keep in mind that this is a decisive period for every spirit, and you will have to confront suffering. Soon, in different regions, I will have you plant trees, which is what I have named in my word the houses of prayer, or places of worship. Toward that end, prepare yourselves and allow the spiritual world to manifest itself fully among you, so that you might have the just interpretation of my teachings. You have little time left to listen to these messengers of my divinity. The year of 1950 is near, and what improvement in my work will you offer me? Be aware that I have awakened you from the depths of spiritual lethargy, so that you will not imitate the virgins of the parable who allowed their lambs to be extinguished. If you slumber while you hear the last word of your Lord, you will awaken surprised. Behold among you those who come tired of wandering. Some feel at peace before their conscience. Others, on the other hand, come with remorse. All of you who come are attracted by the rumor that I am speaking to mankind. And when you listen to this word, you hear the Father say to you, I am here among men to allow them to hear my teaching and fulfill a promise to them. Now you are faced with a new opportunity of listening to the Master and receiving his lessons. I am reminding everyone of their gifts and indicating their mission. He who is constant and strong along my path will soon know my kingdom. No one can take away the light from the one who knows how to guard it zealously and knows how to make it glow with his virtue. You are wanderers in this earthly existence, and as disciples of this spiritual teaching, you should interpret it thus. I welcome everyone with perfect love, and with that love I judge you. How different is the judgment of your Lord from that of men? Of the 144,000 chosen by me for the fulfillment of this spiritual mission, a portion will listen to my word through these spokesmen. Another portion will spiritually receive my mandates aided by their gift of intuition. And another, dwelling in the hereafter, will fulfill their mission to mankind in a spiritual manner. My light shall illuminate all places on earth. Some ask the Master when all these incidents will take place. And truly, I say to you, that much depends also on your will and perseverance. Those who do not awaken while in the flesh will be lifted from earth, so that their spirit will relinquish anything which ties or prevents them from recognizing my work. Many times I have said to you, do not wait for better times in which to work, for you do not know whether future times might prove more difficult. Comply, so that I will not have to remind you afterward of the many downfalls which will involve mankind. There are those who say to me, Father, wait for me a while longer. And here is what I say to you. I can wait more and more for the return of the Son, for I am eternity. But keep in mind that I have sent you to conquer it. Others say to me, Master, it is best that you lift me from this world, for I cannot bear it any longer. 
When will you live satisfied with your destiny? When will you realize that much of your suffering is due to a purification by which you are liberating yourself of the heavy burden of imperfection? Only through understanding and harmony will you attain peace. How slowly you have traveled on that path of spiritual knowledge. You have lived through many centuries of revelations and experiences, and still I find you weak and immature when I behold that you are incapable of answering a question, or when you are unable to master the ordeals which you encounter along your path. It is my wish that all of you become my disciples, that you relinquish that which will keep you from facing the truth. Always meditate spiritually, so that you will not stumble from the difficulty of understanding my word. Forget that you were those who could not imagine that God was invisible, that while thinking about me, you immediately conceived in your mind the figure of a human being of gigantic proportions, a being who, although had a form, would not allow himself to be seen, and was always concealed behind a dense veil of mystery. If I became man in Jesus, it was not to give you the impression that God has a human form, but to make myself be seen and heard by those who were blind and deaf to all which is divine. If the body of Christ had been the body of Jehovah, in truth I say to you that he would not have bled or died. His was a perfect body, but human and sensitive, so that humanity could behold him and through him hear the voice of their heavenly Father. Always when your concept about the divine has been far from the truth, I have come to your aid to destroy fantasies and unrealities and to make you penetrate the right path. I am the way, the truth and the life. My doctrine does not speak of death. If I frequently tell you of the existence of the spiritual realm, it is because there is exactly where life and eternal happiness exist, like a promise for your spirit. But I do not do it so that you may wish for death and hate this life. My word during this era speaks to you of the spiritual life, and it is because you have reached that chapter of the Book of Life in your evolution which shows the unrevealed mysteries to the spirit. If man possesses a spirit, it is natural that it would reveal some evidence of its nature. But I have said that as long as the influence of the flesh does not submit to the dominance and dictates of the spirit, man will be able to penetrate very little within himself, to contemplate his inner light and hear his spiritual voice. When you happen to have a moment of solitude and meditation, unknowingly you enter into communion with the spiritual and have the sensation of the eternal, and that part of eternity lives and vibrates within your being. That was how, during the first era, man discovered that within him was a being, a nature that was not of this world, but belonged in another mansion. And this fact did not panic him, on the contrary, it filled him with hope, for he saw that his life was not limited to a brief existence on this earth. He sensed that his spirit, on separating from the body, would be raised toward a mansion in which he would find a happiness unrealized in this world. A just compensation for his elevated ideal. I came to the world to strengthen all those inspirations with my doctrine, and to those who dream of worlds of wisdom, love and justice, where there are no tears, miseries or disagreements, I dedicated my sermon on the mount so they would persevere in their hope.
with how much gentleness and love those first teachers of Christianity taught humanity. The strength of their word was in agreement with their needs, with which they converted and inspired them towards spirituality. I call them teachers, for they taught according to my examples. If anyone since then has taught and forced his fellow men to believe without understanding the meaning of my teachings, he has not been a teacher. If he has used force, depriving his brethren of the freedom of thinking, believing and reasoning, he has not imitated me, but he has deprived the spirits of their eagerness to penetrate the depths of my revelations. When my name and my doctrine have been applied to suppress people or to inject fear, and through this fear men have been forced to believe, I say to you that the ultimate goal which they have pursued has not been spiritual. Instead, it has been earthly power. How clear was the intention of the Master when he granted you his words and examples which you could summarize into that phrase, My kingdom is not of this world. Enter into my ark, for it will never capsize. But do not doubt like Peter, believing that the master slumbered. For it will not be my voice, but grief itself that would say, O men of little faith, my peace be with you.